It's always an honor and a pleasure to have with us His Excellency John Pierre Mbasa, the Secretary General of the USCLGA Africa. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, we thank you so much for joining exclusive with Tahrid Hassan here on RTV International. And today we've witnessed another foundation stone in our sense of collaboration and taking new horizons of cooperation between Egypt and Africa. So it's a special visit to Egypt, a special agreement as I have seen, and also uh, definitely a vision for the future. Well, I'm always very happy when I'm in Egypt because I remember that uh, the rebirth of our movement of uh, local and subnational governments has been done here in Egypt. We started the process of creating a Pan-African Council of subnational and local government here in 2010. And at that time, we did not envision the development that we, we have seen uh, since then. So uh, for us, Egypt has been a point of departure of our development. And at that time, we said to Egypt that um, they have to, to see their roots in Africa. Uh, at the time, uh, Egypt were very much focusing its um, <coughs> action in the Middle East. And uh, I think we were one of the contributors of uh, the new um, impetus of Africa in Egypt. And uh, this was uh, even uh, magnified with uh, the fact that President Sisi became the president of the African Union. So we are very happy to be here. And uh, today we will commence a new itinerary and uh, what start in Egypt for us always last so we're happy to be here. yes we are also very happy for the start of this new itinerary and uh, we think that uh, uh, this is uh, a launching for further horizons of cooperation. How do you foresee future steps in our cooperation vis-a-vis -vis the agreement that has been signed today? Remember, our organization want to link the African people living at the local government level because we are convinced that development is local or it doesn't exist uh, democracy is local or it doesn't exist uh, modernization of the living condition of our people are witness at the local level and no nowhere else so for us bringing local government of africa together is building the african of the people beyond the african of the states this is very critical and remember, uh, even the head of state and government of this continent are convinced of that because they adopted the African Charter of Values and Principles of Decentralization, Local Governance, and Local Development because they know that uh, unless I witness development in my backyard, it doesn't exist. And uh, because of that, because of the role that subnational and local government play in the global or social compact between the people and the public institution, it is critical that we succeed. And there are new environments that have been created at the level of the African Union when they sign the Africa free, st free, st uh, free Trade Agreement. Yes. Okay, we don't want to leave this free trade agreement at the level of uh, only national government. We want this free trade agreement to become a daily uh, concern of the normal Africans. And this is why we think it, can, it should open up 
to cooperation between local government in Africa. I give you an example. I visited Damieta two years ago, and I find in Damieta the capital, the African capital of furniture. This is just amazing. And I asked them, where do you get your wood? And they said, well, we import it from Sweden or from Russia. And they said, how come? Beneath your feet here in Africa, in the Congo, in DRC, in Cameroon, in Central Republic, in Gabon, you have any wood that you want. Why do you go in Europe? to get wood, to have your furniture done in the meter. Please turn your eyes towards Africa. Africa, yeah. Egypt turned eyes uh, towards Africa under the leadership of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. It has been a very fruitful year, the uh, Egyptian leadership and chairmanship of the African Union. And this sense of collaboration continues. We find the, the president giving directives to the ministers, and this has been reflected today in the speech uh, of the Minister of Local Development, uh, Major General Sharawi, and also with the Governor of Cairo, uh, on how His Excellency is always giving directives of opening up to Africa and inking partnerships with Africa. We are really proud to be uh, in the central and in the heart of Africa. Let me tell you uh, that we are very grateful to Minister Sarawi and the governor of Cairo to have created these links between our organization and Egypt. They have been very instrumental to uh, the uh, reinforcement of this link. And let me also confess that the dream that we have is to see Egypt, and in particular Cairo, taking the lead of the creation of uh, the network of metropolitan cities and regions of Africa. Because remember, globalization is managed by global cities. If you are not part of this uh, network of global cities, you are not part of globalization as uh, a manager. You are only a recipient. So we need Cairo to lead this network of global cities in Africa, because Cairo is already a global city. Yes. Johannesburg is another global city. Why don't we link then Nairobi, Addis Ababa, Algiers, uh, 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 Casablanca, uh, uh, Johannesburg, uh, from Cape to Cairo, so that under the leadership of the city of Cairo, we start rebuilding this network of global cities for Africa to play its rightful role in the management of uh, the, new, the new globalization that we wish more equitable, uh, with more uh, mm, concern, uh, interest for sustainable development, and more interest for inclusiveness and justice. Yes, definitely. And Egypt is working uh, hard on uh, definitely also with African counterparts in order to reach the Africa that we aspire. And uh, since Your Excellency has mentioned a dream uh, coming true and in your capacity as uh, the Secretary General of the UCLGA, uh, tell me more about what does it take to make this dream coming true and uh, what would be uh, your reputable organization's um, contribution in order to have uh, this dream becoming effective on, on solid grounds and linking those uh, uh, cities globally uh, also with Africa. You know, my father used to tell me, all that happened to you is your fault. Don't blame anybody from what happened to you. This means what? This means that you need to be responsible of your life. And we, you need to consider what do you have as advantage in this world of today. Number one advantage is that you are the future of the world. 
because the bulk of the population of the world will be in this continent. This is the first advantage that you have. Second advantage that you have, you have the youngest population of the world. This means that uh, the dream, that you can dream, you have the means to realize it because you have time with the young people of this continent. Yeah. Number three, you are the future of the world because your young people, if well educated, and remember, one out of two young uh, people of the age of 18 and below are in Africa. It means that the future of this world is lying in the hands of our young people. So it is the responsibility of subnational and local governments of this continent to drive this uh, advantage. We call it uh, the youth dividend that we have in Africa to get, let's say, a leapfrog on these new technologies, on smart solutions, but also decentralized solutions. Because through decentralization, only can you reach out to the people where they live. So I believe strongly that uh, if uh, Egypt is determined to work with us, to this uh, capacity of reaching out and mobilizing our young people to translate the dream of the Agenda 2063 of the Africa we want into the reality because they have the time to see these young people driving this traje trajectory while in Europe, for example, they will be long be dead because they are old population. Here we are a young population. Yes, the young population and His Excellency the President is investing in the youth. You remember uh, the World Youth Forum in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. That was a smash hit and uh, I remember also uh, how the African youth were really inspired and we were also inspired by their dreams and uh, you can even find the President recording uh, in his notes some of their suggestions so that we can make a, a plan of action and uh, all the youth of the world would be working in collaboration together. So Egypt is really keen to integrate African youth. Uh, what do you think could be, Your Excellency, the mechanism of uh, integrating uh, the youth of Egypt with the youth of Africa and working for the Africa that we aspire? You know what? Only always learn from over experience. When Europe um, went through the Second uh, World War and it was a, a real battle between France and Germany, what they did, they said we don't want to see this anymore happening. So we'll build a spirit of peace and common understanding for our young people. And they started youth cooperation between local governments on the borders of France and Germany. And it is through this decentralized cooperation around program of youth exchange that the spirit of building a European Union started. So if at all we can be able to repeatedly In, To be inspired by the lessons taught. By the lesson. By saying we are going to have a youth program of exchange between local governments of Africa, starting with local government of Egypt, with their uh, counterpart in the over region of Africa, youth exchange, building uh, the dignity of being an African, and learning from each other, and knowing 
what each other are doing. Do you know that the mobile money system that we are using today across the world was born in Nairobi because of the young people of the slums that were going to pay the electricity bill. But since they were so far away from the inner city, when they arrived to pay, their turn was over. The office was closed. They have to go back and come again. And when they came, they said, OK, you pay your bill, and you pay the re-establishment of the, the, the electricity because we have to cut it because you didn't pay your bill. And then they imagine, how can we use our mobile phone to become a bank account? Mm -hmm. And this is how they invented what they call M-Pesa. And that became mobile money. So who knows this history? Who knows this? This is the narrative that we don't see. I hope Nile TV will do his job. Yes, uh, definitely. Nile TV would always be uh, honored uh, to have this link among uh, the African people and uh, to work also on the plan and the vision to achieve the dream of the Africa that we all aspire. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, before wrapping up this interview, we'd like to know more about your dreams for your reputable uh, organization for the UCLGA the dreams for the future, what does it take? Are there challenges and how to overcome them? You know, it takes responsibility to be the first in a given context. I told you, by the end of century, Africa will be the number one home of uh, uh, the population of the world. It means that in the hands of Africans lie the sustainability of the world. The choices that we'll be doing to access energy, to manage water, to uh, uh, manage mobility, to manage housing, to manage access to basic services to manage participation of people in democracy all these choices will be key for the sustainability of the world of tomorrow so the challenge we have is that the african leadership should incorporate this responsibility from now on in their behavior and uh, uh, shy away from copy and paste behavior, saying that what has worked in Europe in the field of, for example, managing urbanization will work in Africa. No, mm -hmm. Europe did, did not confront such a huge uh, uh, urbanization uh, rate, uh, growth rate in the past. Our cities still grow. Have their own identity. Uh, they still grow 5 10% per year. It is very, very high pace. And you don't have that in history. Also, you know, this world is lacking of sense. There is need to recover a sense of dignity a sense of humanity. And all these senses are embedded in African civilization. And the mother of African civilization is Egypt. You have a responsibility in that. Oh, definitely. From the mother of the world, a message uh, through Nile TV International that your excellency would direct and would be seen all over the African continent. The lesson we learn from COVID solidarity and cooperation matters and be local government be let local government be the custodian of international solidarity and cooperation thank you 
Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, John Pierre Monvasa, the UC LGA Secretary General, thank you so much for being with ITV International. Honor to have you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. And that was exclusive with Taghreed Hussein here on ITV International. We were really honored to have with us uh, His Excellency uh, John Pierre Monbassa, who is the Secretary General of the UCLGA.